Good evening, everybody, and you're all very welcome to the fifth webinar in our Tidy Towns uh, webinar series. This one is on the UN Sustainability Development Goals and Tidy Towns. So this presentation is adapted from a presentation by the Departments of, of Communication, Climate Action and Environment, which is now the Department of Environment, Climate Action and Communication. And it will be presented by myself and John Carney from the Tidy Towns Unit, who you all remember from last week's uh, presentation. Evening, everybody. OK, so um, the key thing with the Sustainability Development Goals is to act locally and think globally. And just because they're Sustainability Development Goals doesn't mean they apply elsewhere. They apply everywhere. So um, some people would look at these and think, oh, developing countries only. That's not true. They apply to all of us. So there are 17 goals and they reflect economic, social and environmental dimensions of sustainable development. Um, 193 member states have signed up to it and there's 169 targets. And each goal is uh, depicted in a little tile. So basically thinking along the lines that we have one planet, we're looking for a better world. There's 7.7 .7 billion people here and the 17 goals are trying to influence both the environment and the community and 193 member states have signed up. So with the goals, we have three pillars, okay? The biosphere being the base pillar, the largest one, followed by society. And if you'll see, there are tiles linked with each of these. So the society has a number of goals, six, seven goals linked with, eight goals linked with it. Um, and then we have the economy, which would have four goals linked with it. And the, the very top goal is partnership. It's where all these things link together. So the biosphere, society and economy. And if you think of the biosphere is basically our, the world we inhabit, it's what sustains us as human beings um, to live. So for sustainability goals, again, to link to the local authorities worked, we act locally, think globally. Anti-litter initiatives would fall under this. Our Community Environment Action Fund, which would be formally the Local Agenda 21. Um, collaboration work that's done with the uh, public participation networks, the Environment Awareness Officer networks, local authorities generally linking in with each other. And then additional initiatives, which will include sustainability goal branding in the future, will be Tidy Towns, National Spring Clean, Gun Litter Task Force, any number of them. So when we move on to think of sustainability goals and tidy towns, we're looking, we're going to break this down using the tidy towns categories and what goals might apply to each category. So if we look at uh, the goal one, it's no poverty. So you could look at that in your community um, category, that's the first category, or sustainability doing more with less, or residential streets and housing areas. And then some actions to consider, supporting your local charities and groups, support your local Bernardos, have a local shoebox appeal, uh, take one, leave one behind, book schemes, things like that, and include marginalized individuals, um, might be within your community. Can you include them in some of the initiatives you're doing? In terms of goal two, we have um, zero hunger. And that might seem, no, that's not really for us. But again, it hits community and planning. It hit green spaces and sustainability doing more with less. So you could be looking at things in terms of actions, edible landscapes, free nutrition classes, grow it yourself, cookery classes, local businesses providing food to homeless shelters and the like. And certainly we've seen that maybe in some of the larger towns and cities, but you certainly will see that type of initiative when um, the hotels were more open than what they are at the minute. Yeah. Sorry, Sinead, we've seen quite a few as well, of, of like community garden initiatives and um, the edible landscapes. We've seen a lot of, you know, where uh, people have done herb gardens. I've seen some in, you know, nice little initiatives where they're done from recycled pallets and people can come along and help themselves to whatever herbs they want uh, for their cooking and stuff. So little things like that, you're doing your bit for your community, but also taking one of the, the goals there. Very good. 
And then in terms of goal three, we're looking at good health and well-being. And again, this is community planning and involvement, green spaces, nature and biodiversity, and residential streets and housing areas. And really, the sky's the limit in this one. It's walking in the woods, volunteering, supporting local mental health associations, connecting in with your community, park runs, operation transformation walks, fundraising, runs and cycles, community gardening, community check-in. So for instance, I know that our Newcastle West Tidy Towns group would support the uh, darkness into light walk every year and they would organize segregated bins to happen at that event every year in Newcastle West. So that's just a small example of where a Tidy Towns group is linking in with a good health and well-being initiative. So for Tidy Towns quality education, for the categories, we're looking at community. Community is in nearly all of them, green spaces and landscaping and nature and biodiversity. So for quality education, think in terms of book swaps, free community libraries, skill shares, uniform swaps, lifelong learning weeks. You might be involved or you might be promoting something to do with lifelong learning, which is generally in May every year. Life-wide learning, you know, you might be trying to broaden people's skill set generally. Can you do initiatives around poetry week or book week? Or can you tie in with somebody who is or an organization that is running those sort of things? And I think that point you made there about tying in with things, Sinead, you know, groups shouldn't always feel they have to be the drivers behind things. If, yeah. if you um, cooperate with an existing um, event or like, like as Sinead said, with the darkness into light walk there, you know, once you're part of the event, you can still reference it in your uh, entry form. If you're associated with it, with it in any way, um, don't always feel that you have to be the key driver or the initiator in a project you don't once you have participated in it or supported it um, and once it's happening in your general area it's still for the for the greater good of your community so just to bear that in mind very good and also i think john you've said before that say in terms of poetry week and book week um a lot of groups for your newsletter the tidy towns newsletter have sent in stories yeah and poems. we've had some lovely poems in in fairness really um thought-provoking material some of them and we we love to hear those from groups of poetry or stories or even art you know there's so many skills out there that 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 people need to to share with us um everybody loves to hear those kind of stories so yeah keep them coming into us lovely and then for goal five this is gender equality and we're looking at community and planning and involvement for this one for the tidy towns categories and then in terms of the actions it might be a peer support group it might be men's emotional well-being think the men's shed or women's shed projects and um, supporting domestic violence shelters i know that one of the second hand shops in town is specifically um adapt how uh, at the adapt house shop and um you know you could get involved in an initiative that would support um a, that second hand shop if you will and then fair trade and fair trade you might kind of go well what's fair trade to do with gender equality but fair trade has um gender balance built into it women are allowed own land they're allowed do business so a, a quite important one there as well and again you don't have to be the one involved in the fair in accessing all of the fair trade information maybe there's a group within your community that are already involved in fair trade be it the, the school the church um, the parish, one of the parishes, or, um, or, or there might be a local group. Um, goal six is clean water and sanitation. Um, and again, this would hit sustainability and doing more with less. And again, our actions here are drink from the tap. That's a big one. Um, the refill.ie initiative ask the green schools kids and that will be true of nearly all of the the sustainability goals because kids would be working on various initiatives around the environment at school both via their curriculum and the majority of schools are now in the green schools program so they're at uh, doing one of the themes there um, and they certainly would have ideas here and say for instance even in terms of learning how to read a water meter for a business um, schools would have discovered that you know they had leaks because they read the water meter on a Friday and these are the students 
and then they read it first thing the following Monday. And if water is being used during that time, well, there's either a leak or they're using their, uh, they don't have their urinals on, on a, 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 a timer system. So there's lots of ways to, to save water there. Um, and reusable cups and bottles would be another big one to promote their use. I think the schools are a great resource really for Tidy Towns groups to engage with. And, and many of the groups have junior Tidy Towns committees and stuff. So it's, it's, yeah. it's definitely something groups should give some thought to. Um, a lot of these sustainable initiatives um, under the green flag and the blue flag initiatives in schools are being progressed. So again, if, if you're in any way associated with the school or supportive of the actions being done in the school, you can use those projects as well to, to form part of your entry form. Lovely. So then for the Tidy Towns category for goal seven, we're looking at sustainability, doing more with less. And again, this one will be Ask the Green Schools Kids and Energy Vampires we're mentioning here. But like say green schools would do um, you know, simple things like the standby button. The standby button can use up to 10 euro of electricity a year in your house. And many of us have devices now with standby buttons. So you could have six or eight of those in your house. And if you leave them on all the time, well, that's 60 or 80 euros um, that you don't need to be spending every year. Um, the energy saving community uh, leadership programs, learning to read your energy bills, really, really important one. I would be guilty of not ringing in my meter reading every month. Um, and if you don't and you're getting an estimated bill, you're generally paying more for that. Um, plugging out, turning off, again, the turning off comes for the standby things. Simple actions like that in terms of um, um, tidy towns and promoting those actions is one of the very, very important parts of re attaining this goal. And, you know, sometimes we think, well, a standby light, what's that? But I do remember one year when Derek Mooney was in the afternoon program, he got all his listeners to turn off all their standby lights, just their standby lights in their houses at a particular time one day. And it was noticed on the national grid. So standby lights do have an impact and the collective impact is large. And I think uh, just even an initiative for a tidy towns group there in relation to those points, Sinead, is just even for them to do an awareness campaign yeah. Um, just to share that information with their residents and with their community. So again, it doesn't have to be physically doing anything. Yeah. It can be an awareness project or, or an information sharing project. So maybe during, um, you know, if you have a, a WhatsApp group, if you have a Facebook page, if you have a community newsletter, share these little pieces of information with groups and the, collectively then the community can make a difference in reducing um, waste consumption or, or energy consumption. You know, there's, there's different ways that you can share your message with groups. And again, it's going back to the act local, think global. Yeah, very good. And then for goal eight, we're looking at decent work and economic growth. So again, we'd be looking for our categories, community and planning and the sustainability of doing more with less. For our tidy towns actions, there are things like shopping local, um, community-based workshops, supporting social enterprises, encouraging social enterprises, circular economy initiatives, they, they'd be your second-hand shops, your repair businesses, um, community-driven activities and festivals. So really it's about supporting your own and what we need to, supporting your own locally. And what, you, what we need to remember sometimes is the money that we spend locally also gets spent locally. It doesn't, it stays within the community and that supports those within our community. So it's quite important. And I think it's one of the things that has probably grown in the last year because of um, our restrictions and that we, we may be just a little bit more conscious of buying locally. In terms of industry innovation and infrastructure, the categories we'd be looking at would be community again and sustainability doing more with less. Um, again, for this one, we'd be looking at the actions supporting local markets, urban co-ops, energy co-ops, work with industry in your communities under their corporate social responsibility programs. Um, and many of them have them and many of them are very keen to work with groups um, and connect with your local super value. 
oops, sorry. So in terms of reducing inequalities, which is goal 10, we're looking at community, your planning and involvement, residential streets and housing areas, approach roads, green spaces and sustainability doing more with less. Um, and for these actions, we'd be looking at social inclusion in, in your group, um, in your area, join or start a befriending initiative, uh, local information points to, um, you know, that are accessible for people, um, groups like the Sanctuary Runners, where you're working with people that just don't have access to what many of us in our communities have. Um, even things like, you know, um, the accessibility of our footpaths, uh, whether we have signposting um, or, or uh, I can't remember the name now, but signposts out that are basically there are obstacles on the footpath. If you have a visual impairment, you know, um, if can you get around with from zero to, to 94? Can you get around in your community? Are there high curbs? Are there high steps? Are there obstacles for buggies and wheelchair users and people with mobility frames? So th there's a lot of different things there that help reduce in inequality. And then for sustainable cities and communities, all of the tidy towns categories fit here and are relevant because everything about tidy towns is actually, if you look at it, can can fit into the sustainability sustainability as a goal to try and make our, our, our towns and villages and areas more sustainable. So our actions would be future proofing your uh, local area. Do you have um, a local village plan, a sustainability plan. Is it built in, is sustainability part of the building into your tidy towns um, three to five year plan? Or if you're working with your community council or whoever it might be on an area development plan, have you built sustainability <coughs> into that? Um, the development and protection of our natural and built heritage locally. Um, and as I said, tidy towns would be really, really, really key in developing um, sustainability in the within your community and future proofing your community that's that's a very good point there Sinead just you know and I know the three to five year plan we covered that in in the last seminar in the last webinar but and many groups are well familiar with the three or five year tidy towns plans but it would be a, a very good idea to maybe have a mini plan within that or within each of your actions to identify what sustainable goals they link so that when you do come to achieving that project or progressing that project you've already identified what tiles should be integrated into your entry form so it's kind of again showing that aware an awareness to your adjudicator of you have taken um you know like a visual impact of your town or your village and what key areas you would like to improve or what areas you would like to work on but in that uh, task of doing that you've also identified what uh, sustainable goals can be met and can be achieved in doing those projects so yeah. it's it's thinking ahead really and it's something that you know if groups are starting a new plan it's something maybe they could try and incorporate into it absolutely and i think um the individual tiles that sometimes you don't even need to write anything. You can just copy and paste the individual tile yeah. beside the action yeah, exactly. or beside the plan. And um, that would be a very simple way of indicating and colorful, uh, indicating yeah, exactly. the, 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 your, your knowledge or your group's knowledge of, of the goals. Responsible consumption and production. This is one that I would work under quite a bit would be the key one and it's community again as sustainability doing more with less and tidiness, tidiness and litter control. So for the actions here, like go to places like mywaste.ie, the conscious cup campaign, stop food waste program, huge refill.ie, obviously reusable bottles, all of that type of thing anything that ditches the disposables we've had one community in limerick in north patrick who uh, purchased re real cups to use for a very large event that they have every year where they would have about 300 people showing up um obviously not this year or um but but they can also be used within the community setting afterwards okay um 
we've had other john i think you mentioned glass lock was it yeah glass lock have a thing where they have um it's kind of a party party wear so plates cups cutlery tumblers all of that sort of thing and they they have purchased a full set of all of that and they're they're sharing it with all of the the residents and and the community you know so if you're having even parties in your own house children's birthday parties and the like but rather than buying all of the single use plastic or paper cups and plates that uh, these are made available to groups and also for community events um so it it greatly reduces that amount of of material in the nook and re in landfill great idea um bring and barter days are another one and one of the thing one of the initiatives we ran now it's a good while back within a, within a housing community um was everybody brought what was under their kitchen sink because that's where you the household hazardous waste products and they literally did a swap so people buy things that they might never use like you know you get all these um maybe for car maintenance or cleaning your car and wiping your car and you might have bought them and never used them, but somebody else is really into cars and they will use them. So to just think about things like that, how you can bring school or kids games, um, board games, books, all of that type of thing, toys generally. Um, and then really in this one, you're thinking, you're rethinking what you're doing. So rethinking, you're rethinking about reducing, can you reduce your waste? Can you reuse stuff? Can you repair it? Can you recycle? use repair my stuff is there a local repair directory can you promote your local um you know you might have a, a seamstress in town or an alterations business and um, all of those are very very important um in terms of responsible consumption and production and what you're looking at also conscious consumerism and this has come up in another one shopping local but to actually think in terms of shopping local is actually responsible consumption and production as well and say, for instance, in one of our local urban co-ops or say in our local uh, Limerick's local milk market, a lot of the produce there would actually be so grown and sourced locally. So it's coming short distances. So you're looking at low food mileage and all of that as well. It's very important as well under responsible consumption and production. Yeah, I think, again, the circular economy is coming in there, Sinead, you know, with a lot of the reduce, reuse, the, the bring and barter days. And, and, you know, groups will see here that a lot of the um, actions are, are beginning to repeat themselves. Um, so, you know, like refill.ie is there, the Conscious Cup is there, you know, there's a lot of, of um, initiatives that groups will now begin to have an awareness of that they tick more than one of the goals and I think through the work done with Ennis Tidy Towns that was shared in the Tidy Towns newsletter throughout 2020, um, some of the initiatives had four, four or more goals ticked for one, for one uh, single uh, initiative or project that a Tidy Towns group might undertake. So even though you're doing um, an initiative under one of the categories, uh, you may be able to reference that again or else reference a number of tiles against it, mm -hmm. you know, that it's yeah. it's not just one tile for one project. So to bear that in mind. Yeah, that's actually quite important. So for some of these, you could be hitting maybe four or more goals. Yep. So for climate action, which is goal 13, all of the, all of the tidy towns categories would um, have the potential to have actions in them under this uh, development goal and um, have you got climate action plans for your local area again the conscious cup all of the ones that we mentioned under um sus uh, the sustainability doing more with less or responsible consumption and production will come up here um, and basically the, the future is local looking after planting trees um looking after your local local wildlife bird box initiatives all of that anything that goes to protecting your environment as a whole um is an action under climate goal 14 is life below water so we're again looking at community involvement and planning green spaces nature and biodiversity sustainability doing more with less and tidiness and litter control for our tidy towns categories for our goals um for our actions and before we get on to the actions john this might be a good one to mention we got a question to do with islands um at the last uh when we actually did this uh webinar live 
Um, this is okay. a re-record because we had a technical error. Um, so we might deal with that question now. I mean, obviously, goal 14 would be very relevant in terms of islands, life below water. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it does have to be a, an island that is inhabited, am I right, year round? Yes, we, we have a, a specific islands award as part of the Tidy Towns competition, but in order to be eligible for that, it has to be an island that's inhabited, but also is not connected to, to the mainland by a bridge. So it would have to be accessible by boat or by plane or whatever. So, um, and there's a first and second prize each year for that. Now there's no entry form, additional entry form or anything. Island applications are automatically entered into that award and the top two scores uh, will receive the first and second prize respectively. Very good. And the key thing is it has to be inhabited year round. It has to be inhabited, yeah. Yeah. And in order for the projects to be, you know, continued and for there to be a difference made there, it would have to have, you know, tidy towns groups, you know, on the mainland will be well familiar and indeed on our islands that this isn't, um, you know, involvement in the tidy towns isn't a you know a part-time you know it's it's year round. and we very much appreciate what groups do it's full-time it's it's 24 7 3 6 5 really and i know in the last number of months groups haven't been able to be doing what they would like to be doing but yeah. that that's that's where we are but it is a it is you know in order for groups to make a difference so many of them put in a huge amount of effort throughout the year yeah and again, just to say again that in terms of islands, all of the um, sustainability goals apply, all of the tidy towns categories apply. It's life below water just exactly. triggered it for yeah. me <laughs> to, to raise the. Yeah, point. I know that's fine. Yeah. So um, in terms of tidy towns actions, we have things like save the fishes, frog spawn, tadpole, the frog survey with the Irish Peatland Conservation Council, you have the local authorities water program, Waterways Ireland. In, inland waterways, National Biodiversity Data Centre, Dragonfly Surveys, Pollution Free Waters, Protect Our Waterways. You might have done an awareness initiative around this, Seashore Surveys, Invasive Aquatic Species. Um, look for citizen science projects that are out there that you can feed into basically, or you can adapt for your own local area. Um, I might just remind groups as well there of the Waters and Communities Award, which has been part of the Super Value Tidy Towns competition now for a number of years. And it's it's a collaborative sponsorship between the local authorities, Waters Programme, Waterways Ireland and Inland Fisheries. Um, you know, so not every town or village has a water body in, in or around their catchment area, but for those that do, for those who, who are coastal applicants or for those who have rivers or, or, or lakes or whatever close to them it is definitely something to consider applying for um, and a lot of the project work that they would be submitting for that special award is already work that they would be including in their main entry form so when you've done the work already you might as well submit the application for the special award also very good yeah and that's true of, of, of other special of awards all the special well. awards in fact yeah we only bring on special awards when they do align with one or more of the competition categories so it's not as if we're asking groups to do anything new it's work they're already undertaking and just to remind groups that if you are applying for a special award to reference that in the main category of the competition entry form as well that you have applied for it very good in terms of 15, we're looking at uh, life on land. Again, we're looking at community involvement and planning, green spaces, nature and biodiversity, sustainability, tidiness, litter control, and residential areas. And lots of things here. Um, and again, you'll see overlap with other areas. So we're looking at perennials. Um, obviously, pollinating perennials are preferable to annuals. Uh, so we'd be looking to see an improvement in the balance um, of perennials in an area. Frog surveys, again, with the Irish People and Conservation Council, planting a tree, look at the Irish Tree Council initiatives, National Biodiversity Data Centre, different, they have all sorts of surveys running there that um, are citizen science surveys, if you like. Uh, traditional skills workshops. Uh, we have a lovely group in one of our, in Kilkinnon is a C, C category, I think, might be B. Um, 
and they have a fantastic um, group that do traditional skills of basket weaving, but also even um, they spin wool from scratch. You know, it's fantastic to see. Um, Birdwatch Ireland uh, initiatives, garden bird, you know, the winter garden bird survey, the Irish wetland bird survey, the countryside bird survey, all of these things are where citizens who have a bit of knowledge can participate in. Nest box projects, bat conservation Ireland, in fairness, bat conservation was mentioned by one of um, somebody who, who asked a question, just uh, referenced the fact that I hadn't included bats in the original presentation. There's bat box projects. And at this time of the year, now that the weather is warming up a bit and we have more insect life out there, um, there are, there are, we're beginning to see bats out and about again, which is lovely. Um, again, citizen science with the National Biodiversity Center, invasive species on land, um, think and think, think native. What is in your local habitat? What is in your local seed banks? Can you let them, can you let what's in your local, your seed bank in the ground? Um, uh, flourish rather than maybe going out and planting something new. And again, the wildflower meadows are a big yes. thing there. And and some groups have been quite concerned that in the last you know 12 months, they haven't been able to get out and mow um, as, as they would have liked. And we're familiar with the, with the cliche, you know, don't mow, let it grow. But, you know, simply mowing one strip of a lawnmower along the edge of a green space shows that it is maintained. Yes. Um, and by not mowing the area, um, maybe only once every year, and removing the grass cuttings from it, that will encourage the natural seed bed to come back, yeah. um, and the amount of pollinators and and you know insects you will see in that area afterwards, um, you know it's amazing. And again, you're ticking so many of the boxes for so many of the categories there. Um, going back to the All-Ireland Pollinator Plan, which many, many of the Tidy Towns groups across the country have really taken on board and, and have been very supportive of it. Um, so things like that, you know, that sometimes what, what you might think is an issue becomes a benefit. So not being able to mow may have brought um, benefits to you that you may not have been expecting. Absolutely. And then in terms of goal 16, we're looking at peace, justice and strong communities. Again, we're looking at community involvement and planning, nature and biodiversity, residential streets and housing areas. And you might find that there's other categories you think apply, tidy towns categories that apply. But in terms of actions, think of your local community development companies, think of your local authority, strategic policy committees, you might be involved, you might have somebody from the community involved your community councils, your development associations. In some cases in Limerick, it will be a community council that enters the Tidy Towns group. In some cases, there'll be a subgroup that is Tidy Towns um, of that. But either way, even if the Tidy Towns is a separate group, they should be linking in with their community council or their community development association. Each should know a little bit about what the other is doing. Um, our public participation network, and in Limerick, there's a very good, um, they did a specific uh, webinar also on the sustainability goals. Um, so that is available on the Limerick PPN website. Corlin and Oak, uh, we have quite a strong Corlin and Oak group here in Limerick. Um, and there where you're involving young people in decision making. Our tidy towns groups themselves. Um, remember, you're experts, you're the local community, you know your area. Um, uh, you may want to do things differently, you might need to bring in outside expertise from time to time, but you are experts within your own area and other local groups that might help with, um, you know, might be the Vincent de Paul, a group that has structures that's out there that's doing work within the community under these headings of peace, justice and strong institutions. And then for partnership for the goals, we're looking at um, community involvement and planning, green spaces, nature and biodiversity, sustainability, tidiness, litter control, residential streets and housing, and approach roads, streets and lanes. And this is all of you uh, talking to everyone, okay, about the social, environmental, and economic aspects of your community. And tidy towns can be a real centerpiece for the partnership of of the goals, basically for the goals within a community um, and just keep that in mind.
I know partnership is key. And I mean, we 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 see it and we we witness it in the application forms all the time, but on occasions where um, some groups around the country would have been entered in the Entente Floral competition over years. That's where the jury members come and do a walk through the area with the Tidy Towns group in collaboration with the local authority. And on occasions like that, we see that partnership in, in, in very strong evidence, you know, that linking in with the schools, linking in with the community gardens, with um, enterprise, uh, business enterprise in the town. So I think the Tidy Towns groups really are the glue that holds all of these together and keeps them all together. Um, and going back to the previous slide there, I think the PPNs, the LCDCs, all those kind of bodies, you know, Tidy Towns groups should be really knocking on all of those doors and keeping involved and keeping up to date with all of the things that are happening in your community because um, you have such wealth of knowledge and such experience through your involvement with the competition that um, the, the support you can give is, is of great value as well. So just to bear that in mind. Absolutely. And John, just when you mentioned that Chambers of Com Commerce would also fit in in terms of peace, justice and strong institutions. Yeah. And I mean, the, the lists you have done there, Sinead, some of them are, are fantastic, the amount of, of options that are given. But there are no way we're not saying that these are all the, the, the categories uh, that link or the actions that you can take. There are probably so many more out there that we haven't thought of. Yeah. Um, and that's that's what sometimes blows us away with Tidy Towns initiatives. You see um, projects coming in where really people have thought outside the box and, and gone with something that really has brought huge benefits to the community. So, um, you know, th this isn't the list as it is. I'm sure if we were to do this webinar again in 12 months time, following the competition for 2021, yeah. and as people become more comfortable with the goals, um, there were probably so many more actions that we could include. So, Absolutely. Um, you know, just to keep keep your thinking caps on that, you know, there's so much happening out there that it's really only, and there's no right or wrong answer to these goals. Anything that you feel that you're doing can help in any way, shape or form for any one of the 17, um, by all means, put it in. Yeah, absolutely, part of the goals. So here's some helpful links in terms of the sustainability development goals. We have the UN website there, um, the Irish government website on the sustainability goals, um, the Tidy Towns newsletters. John mentioned that earlier, that Ennis in particular, I think, have referenced the goals in articles they've submitted there and there may be others and I've put in the Limerick PPN um, network as well because they as I said they did a specific uh, training on the sustainability development goals and then in terms of our own the, the council Limerick City and County Council's webinar series we've done the sustainability goals which is this one obviously myself and John uh, we've done the Tidy Towns application with John specifically in the last week. Um, sustainability doing more with less with Debbie Nesbitt, who's a Tidy Towns um, adjudicator and nature and your locality pollinator friendly planting with Dr. Fiona McGowan. So all of those PDFs of all of those presentations will be on um, limerick.ie and the recordings will be on the European Greenleaf channel and I will email email the link around to all of those. And just to finish by saying a big thank you to John, both again for his webinar last week, but also in terms of um, assisting with this one and um, just follow government guidelines at all times. Stay safe, stay connected and take care. Thanks, Sinead, and thanks for all the support you've been given to, to Tidy Towns groups in Limerick and beyond over the last number of weeks and months and through these webinars. Um, I think information is key and it's all about sharing the information. Um, and I think Tidy Towns groups are great for that. While it is a competition, there's that friendly rivalry there. So, you know, it's, the, it's rising tide lifts all ships. And I think the Tidy Towns groups are very supportive and very caring and, and sharing with their information. So. Well done to all involved and to, to all the speakers. It's There's been a huge amount of information put out there for groups to benefit from. Yeah, fantastic.
Thanks a million, John. Good night, everyone. Thanks, Sinead. Bye, everybody. So that's it. Good stuff. Yeah. So I'll just edit out that little bit and it should be fine this time. Oh, uh, yeah, no problem. See how um, it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. If this It is recording. I see the sign saying it's recording. If it doesn't record this time, I'll go crazy. <laughs> Anyway. All right. Yeah, no, it was um they were very good though. Now we've had a lot of we've had a lot of feedback on the, the tidy towns one, you know, the entry form one. So yeah, it's great. Yeah. Well that's good. That's good. Yeah. And I'm de I'm delighted that it's had that kind of feedback. And I'm delighted, John, in fairness, you've taken a very hands-on approach in terms of the unit and really engaging with groups and they're thrilled. Ah uh, yeah, but I mean thrilled. without without the groups. You know, none of us would be doing this. So yeah. I mean, they're the key that that's holding it all together. So if they're not happy, you know, that's that's the key thing. We need yeah. to keep them, and it's not that we're trying to buy them or anything, but it's just to keep those groups engaged and keep them happy that they don't feel they've been left yeah. to their own devices or that they're on their own in any way, yeah, shape, or form. Their they're not. They're yeah, fighting an uphill battle because that's yeah, what can happen exactly. Times. Yeah, yeah. No, that's brilliant. No, and I think even the radio thing on Saturday, you know, it, it went well and it, it, oh. it has further got the message out there a bit, I hope. So yeah, anything, yeah. any bit of, of coverage we get, because and that's what we tried with the newsletter to try and get that message out there on an ongoing basis. But, yeah, you know, we hear from some groups where the newsletter doesn't, you know, it might just go to one individual and they might not yeah. pass it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah. we're... It's all about yeah. that's why we put it up on the website and on social media and stuff that any bit of information we can share with people that might take the fear out of it for them. Good thing. There's enough anxiety out there at the moment. Never mind too what's adding to it. Yeah. Yeah. Look, mind yourself, John. And you too, Sinead. Thanks Take for care. everything. Take care of yourself. Bye. Bye-bye.